I think it was a bit of both because uh, I do have to give credit to Barcelona. Their pressing was really good from the first minute onwards. And then from us, we played the same 11 that uh, uh, that played against Liverpool. And I think the mistake that Carlo maybe made is he should have probably dropped one of Cruz and Modric. Because although Cruz and Modric, we've seen when they can channel themselves in the bigger games, uh, I don't think they can do it back-to-back in sort of you know big games. So I, I would have preferred to see uh, maybe Sabaya starting. Uh, but I think he ended up making the right changes because we saw when the changes came on, uh, the Real Madrid midfield looked completely different. But unfortunately, it was a little bit too late. No, nah, I was happy, but I was more so happy just about about my score prediction. <laughs> like I was laughing with Oscar because I predicted a two one to Madrid, but I thought, okay, there we go. There's the two one, uh, and then they ruled it offside, and it was correct call uh, to call it offside because those margins are, you know, the margins are painful, but they're very correct. So I think ultimately, Barcelona dominated, so they did do more than enough to win the game, especially there was like a period in the middle of the game where Barca was just getting chance after chance and you had like the Lewandowski overhead, the scissor kick, all sorts of chances. So I think ultimately the deserved winner won in the end. Yeah, I think so. Now, I don't even think there's necessarily a Benzema problem. I just think he's got a lot of minutes in his legs. And unfortunately, because we don't have a direct backup, well, like like for like we have Mariano and then we have uh, young Alvaro. But I think the over-reliance on Benzema means we're going to constantly keep running him into the ground. So like even for today, I would have preferred to maybe have him on the bench since we know he's carrying an injury. I probably would have started Rodrigo at nine, but... I think Carlo will always uh, trust his his veterans more. So at the end of the day, it was it was a call that he had to make. Uh, but now that the gap goes to twelve points, hopefully we see Benzema, uh, we see Modric rested a little bit more in the league, and so I, I want to see the young bucks given uh, more of a chance in the league now. Yeah. Yeah, I think from now on he's going to start declining. He he's still going to show his good levels, but of course, you know, age takes its toll on on all of us. And I think you're correct on the the Mbappe thing is that essentially I think the the big plan from Florentino Perez was to bring in Mbappe and have Mbappe as the third piece in that attack, so it sort of prevented us from getting a right winger and also a direct uh substitution for Benzema ever since Jovic that is. So I think Madrid is caught between two minds where they don't really want to get another young striker in because then you could have another Jovic situation, right? If you bring in someone who's young, who needs minutes, and then they aren't able to get those minutes. Or alternatively, what I would have done if I was in charge, I would have brought a a more senior veteran type of striker, right? So someone like a a Dzeko. Dzeko was the example that a lot of people brought up in the summer, right? So not necessarily Dzeko himself, but any profile of a, a veteran striker who you can bring in off the bench. And the the missed opportunity I think we had this summer, if I was in charge, I would have gone for El Comandante on a free transfer. Nah, I, I would have taken Morales easily on a free transfer. Yeah, it's one of those things where, of course, you, as a fan, you don't want it to happen. Uh, but like you mentioned, because the gap was so much like uh, in the middle of nowhere, it was like 
are we good enough to chase Barcelona or is the gap going to get bigger? Now that it's confirmed, I think now we'll actually see uh, Ancelotti rotate a little bit more in the league, hopefully. And yeah, now the priority is going to become the Champions League. Because I think, like like you were mentioning the reference from the previous podcast, I think the only time that Madrid was going to smell blood is if the gap got to like within five points. That would have been enough for us to maybe keep chasing. But anything beyond five points, I don't think Barcelona is going to drop that many points. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is eerily similar to the last time Ancelotti had to defend his league uh, when he ended up getting sacked. I think for some reason, I don't know, something happened. Like maybe the World Cup break, like I can't really pinpoint like chain tactical changes that happened that like, messed us up. I think it's just a case of us not using our youngsters a lot more. Like I was saying, uh, as much as I love uh, Kroos and Modric and I want to see them get minutes every game, for some of these games in La Liga, I think it would be better served for you to maybe start Ceballos, start Alvaro and whatever, and then bring the veterans off the bench. That way you sort of keep a healthy balance and competition in the squad without running your, your senior players into the ground. Um, I think whether or not we end up trophyless, I think Ancelotti's plan was always to retire because uh, he's always been teetering on the, the edge of mentioning his retirement. But of course, there's an option to extend his contract. So I'm not too sure if he himself, if given the opportunity, will choose to stay. Um, but if I was him either way, I'd, I'd probably walk off into the sunset. I remember he was rumored to be taking the Brazil job, the Canada job. Um, if I was him, I would go for it. Uh, but the problem is, if I'm Real Madrid, who do you bring in as a coach? Because I think the long-term plans, they want to bring in Raul at some point in time. But right now, in the interim, I don't think there's a coach out there that would necessarily suit this team at the moment. No, I don't. Maybe it's me. <laughs> that could be my, yeah, that could be my preference. Again, I don't really like these sort of, you know, short-term planning managers. I think you you sort of either need a really good tactician or you need someone who can babysit the squad, which is what essentially Ancelotti was, a good man manager who can get the best out of both the veterans and the young players without like having drama in the dressing room. I feel like when you now turn to your Tuchels and your Contes, you're going to win a lot of trophies, but you're probably going to blow the team up in three years <laughs> because of this. Yeah, I still have faith. In the Copa del Rey, I have a lot of faith. Uh, I mentioned this to Oscar as well last night that I think we'll overturn that. Um, and I think Barcelona will give them the league, so they'll be able to take that. I, I do hope that in the Copa del Rey, we go all out. And in the Champions League, we go all out. Um, my dream final would be Milan-Madrid. <laughs> but maybe a more realistic final would be Napoli-Bayern, I think. If I was being more realistic, yeah. Um, he has he has had five matches so far and three losses and two wins. Which strikes me as so on. Get get that get that phase into difficult match. Although although that, that was his first match, but get that phase into difficult match. I think the the major problem is 
coming into the team and thinking because we're in a relegation battle, it is a defensive problem. When in reality, Valencia has one of the best defense in La Liga this season. 28 goals considered, and we're in a relegation battle with 20 goals considered. Top 10, I mean, the bottom 10, I don't think anybody has considered less than Valencia. Okay, 31 plus yesterday's three. I don't think anybody has considered less than Valencia. Then you come in, and the next thing you do is play more defensive football rather than solve the attacking issue. Yesterday, he played the, he played the double lateral with um, Fouke and Thierry Correa on the right wing, benching Samolino for the second game running. Everybody knows Samolino is, 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 our, is, our, is a player with the most spark in Valencia, the brightest player, brightest attacker in that team. Although he doesn't give you um, this thing, the goals or assists, but he creates something with his actions. Barra benched him against Atletico Madrid, probably because of fear. But then, and he also benched Andrea Almeida. Yesterday, was, it was a walk in the park for Atletico Madrid. With Griezmann, the type of form Griezmann is on currently, was just, it was unsustainable for us yesterday. So I, I think he's clueless. If, if he does save Valencia, it will be because of our own form. Because two matches, the two matches he won, one one will be choose at home. And yeah. The fans behind the team and all of that. But I think it's clueless. He doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, especially the game against Cadiz, Elche, and Almeria. You are, you have to get maximum six, seven points in those games. There's there's no substitution for that because if you lose against Rari, obviously they are, they are the better team. You lose against Rari, but then you have Almeria. Almeria is in shambles currently, except for the game against Baka. They've lost six in their last seven. Cadiz, Cadiz has started picking up from, but Elche, the worst team in the league. If Barra if Bar, if Bar decides to, during this international break period, does not learn from his mistakes over the past five matches, then I think there will be a real problem for Valencia going forward. Probably the, the Cavani loss wouldn't have helped a lot in terms of goal scoring. But then we have, we have Cavani back and hopefully he doesn't get another injury. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I, I I I don't really think I'm judging him too actually because I see it. Is is like he don't he doesn't have he doesn't have the tactical know-how to manipulate the situation. You know, he he's he's more likely doing. What 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 he experienced as a player, that's what he's trying to transmit into into the team, not his own ideas basically, just deep block, or the defend, you know, and long ball and just, you know. So I doubt I doubt that will work in the long term, especially when you're only getting home wins and no points away from it. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what's funny? That, that never, that never, it had never occurred to me. You know, the same, 
the same announcement like Alexis Sanchez, the same exact announcement like Alexis Sanchez. You, you know what, yeah? Uguduro, last season, big game player, scored in the Copa de Rio final, Copa de Rio um, first, first leg quarter final, no, first semi final, first leg, he scored in the quarter final, quarter final, semi final, and final. He scored two goals against Atletico Madrid and Mestayat to bring us back from 3 1 down to draw the game 3 3. He scored against Real Madrid. You know, big game player, 10 goals, 10 goals in all competitions last season. Then this season comes, he scores a goal, has an, um, a, an ankle injury, goes off. Then he's back in the team now. Unlucky for him, he's back when we're no longer playing that attractive football that got so proposed. So under under bar, if if you watched against Atletico Atletico yesterday, it was more it was mainly isolated in front. There was no support for him whatsoever, and I don't think a, a striker can can compete or can get goals in that type of in that type of system. He did it he did it under Bordalas, you know, but it's, it's a whole different thing, you know. I I think it's a whole different scenario from Bordalas and and Barra. Definitely. Hopefully. Easily. Oh, for the touch. Do you feel like he meant that touch? <laughs> Do you, Oscar, do you know how embarrassing that was for me yesterday? Do you know how embarrassing that sequence was for me yesterday? <laughs>
<laughs> oh no no i was gonna say i kind of i kind of feel bad for uh atleti at the moment now because they've gotten into fine form now and i actually wish they were still in europe uh because they would have been doing really well i think yeah it feels like the barcelona situation where barca had like a really bad period that coincided with uh when they needed to qualify and then atleti had the same thing but if you now take this atleti team and this barca team if you were to put them back in the champions league i think they do better than the milan clubs maybe I was just about to point out the fact that Honest? the lack, of, the, whether they will keep up that momentum, in, in regards to what you just what you just explained now, I think the issue is Simeone has has gone to a, a back five now. They they are they are having good form. They are winning teams. This the six goals against Sevilla at home. But you know what's what's going to happen at the beginning of the next season? Simeone Simeone will try to try to change to another formation. Will try to bring something new and not continue this. This particular formation that has given them good form, because I think towards the end of last season, it changed to a, a three, a three-man defense. And when, when I think when they lost form, it changed to a three-man defense. But then he started the season with a four-man defense. Maybe you are getting me. So like there's this there's this lack of consistency around their system. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think, I think that that's another factor that that probably helps with their with their whole change in form and all of that because DP and Griezmann have developed such a wonderful, a wonderful relationship on the pitch together, and yeah, it helps when it helps a coach when you don't have to change your system constantly to fit in some particular players, probably because of the price at which you bought the players or because those players want to play, you know. Everybody is on board with, with this particular style. Murata also has double figures this season and can play in this particular system ahead of Griezmann or with Griezmann. So it, it makes a lot of sense for Simeone to continue this system and not change. Mm -hmm. Very brilliant footballer. I, I, I watched him against... against... <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you think do you think it's a lock do you think it's a lock issue because last season or i think last season they got carlos fernandez 
and he went on the long term and got a long term injury just coming back a good of a good season with granada then they bought sadiq this season too he hits the ground running for society and the long term injury which forced them to get solid but now carlos fernandez is back and i think he's actually scoring goals now and we are about to didn't start this didn't start this season but then with all he's about they had a very good run of form but yeah it's the same thing as last season from August to January, society are very good, very good form. Tempo is high, they are playing beautiful football. But then January comes around and they fall off, probably because of injuries or lack of consistency or a thin squad at most. I think probably they, they, have, to, they have to recruit better and add to their squad. Yeah, yeah, doing box. It's becoming too frequent, though. This is like the fourth season where, come January, they just collapse. Like I've lost count now. <laughs> nah, I don't think I'd put this on. The... Maybe it's part of the coach's fault, but I, I wouldn't put it on the coach. Yeah, I think as Taj mentioned, they, they lack fullbacks. Aside Gorosabio and um Rico, the only other first team fullback they have is um I think um Zubeldia also. I think Zubeldia also deputizes sometimes for Gorosabio, but they don't have a backup player back, except if they bring from society that'd be so it's a thin squad, you know, and they have to invest. But probably Imano should think about the training intensity and the amount of injuries they get per season come January and all of that. Probably some things need to change. But Imano is the best coach for them. They can't find any other better anywhere. I know I...
No, I was gonna say I don't trust either of them. I my 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 bet would have been on Ryo. I would gamble on putting Ryo <laughs> in here. Yeah, I thought S Sabali was shooting right. That wasn't a match, What if Setien doesn't get them Europe? Yeah. They should be walking. Adila Seranka. They were the best team in the country. I wonder, I wonder from, from, from a fan perspective, I wonder how it should have felt, you know. Last year, you're beating Bayern to go into the Champions League semifinals. And this year, you're losing to Anderlecht. <laughs> At home. There you go. I, I, <laughs> you, you, know, you, you know, you have a very good point. Last season, they were meant to be in the Conference League. But because they won the Europa, they went to Champions League. And add all that erics and all of that. I think Setien is, is super lucky to have Chukwese in his team.
I think we led we when Ledrian when I first saw Ledrian I think it's Ledrian scored one this season. I, I I don't remember why it's the game. Yeah, he scored. Two. Yeah, okay, so yeah, he scored. Two. I think it was in the same match. It was in the same game or something like that. Yeah, so like it was kind of like a new territory, you know. It's, it's not something that is regular, but they kind of take it very well. They are very good at it, you know. I don't know, probably, probably I'm, I'm, I'm praising them too much, but then this is like in Igor Martinez one yesterday, he placed it in between the wall, in between the space between Oscar Plano and, and the wall, and Oscar Plano's deflection took it into the net. But then it was like, oh, probably like he knew what he was doing, you know, not just, it was not a fluke. And like the old game yesterday from Athletic Club, and like Mikel Vesga, like you mentioned, the penalty, very cool and calm. There was this particular shot at the end of the game where he hits the bar. Beautiful, nasty, controlling, and all of that, you know. And I think that's one side of his game where we never really see so much because most of the time he's playing the old him for that. But yesterday, he had, I mean, on Friday, he had Danny Garcia doing that job, so he was like free to do a lot of things and all of that. And he bossed the game, he bossed it very well. Yeah, I think when they went on the gold drought, um, just not too sure what was happening. Um, and Esther Valverde kept making changes where sometimes he would play Sanse deeper, sometimes he would play him a little more forward. So I think maybe that inconsistency within the team, you had the whole Munyain uh, saga as well. So maybe that contributed to it. But much like with Real Sociedad, I, I tactically don't know like what I can pinpoint my finger on in terms of what led to the drop in quality. I think it will do it all right. I think... Yeah, I was going to say, any team that has a lot of like free-scoring attackers, uh, he would come off the bench and do really well. I don't think he'll do well then. You know, like a team that holds possession heavily and that kind of thing. <laughs> That's cruel. You, you, you know, you know what's funny is I lost Vanessa lost to Valladolid away at um, this in the Pusella. Although although it was it was a ref blunder though, but then they bust the game with Dami Machis, Gonzalo Plata. And Kalarin, you know, that way matches. It was funny. It was funny seeing all that, you know, relegate. They're also battling relegation, though. And Valadoli started the season very well. They started the season very well. I did not expect to see them in this situation at this point of the season because they, I think they were the major reason why everyone knew Sevilla were going to have a bad season because they beat Sevilla at home. And like, oh yeah, a new team and all that. But then, Pacheta seems to have failed in getting his team together or being on the same on the same page besides having a good score having a good good scorer like larry from january and all of that you know i don't think i don't think they're on the same page yet <laughs> yeah, both their goals were really good.
<laughs> oh, I, I, I did, I, I, no, 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 I, I did score against them the first game of the season. A Carlos Soler penalty. Yeah, very terrible. And I think that was Boro. But you know, you know something about Raya Valicano? Everybody seems to focus on Isi Palazon or Sergio Camelo at least. But people are ignoring Alvaro Garcia on their left wing. Alvaro, yeah. Like, Alvaro, he, I think, yeah. I think he, he, wears, he wears black gloves every game. And he's very electric and skillful. Very electric. He's rapid. He, he, I think he had double, double figures for goals and assists last season combined. Very good football. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Santi Comesania. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of agree with that as well because I don't think they'll be able to handle it. But the neutral in me wants to be selfish <laughs> and to see them <laughs> play in Europe just for the entertainment. Yeah. Oscar, you, you, you. Okay, I was I was going to say, Oscar, do you remember early early last year when um Celta Sark could it? I think you said um it was not the right thing to do at that moment. <laughs> I I think I think I remember. You. I think I was, I was, you know you know you know something. I was also I was also I was also in that group. I never felt still to find. I was someone. about to say, yeah. <laughs> still to find someone. I thought Carvalho yeah. was bad. I never, I never thought they would find someone with an accident. <laughs> First thing I'll say is he's on think the unfortunately it would yeah, <laughs> it was one of those games because Jose Lu had, I think, two chances. Did, 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 did you see the cross well, from like Ruben the... Sanchez? 
Sorry for cutting you. Yeah. But it, but it's just it's just crazy that I'd say it. That cross from Vincent. Yeah, no, no, no. You you're spot on about this. I feel like it was just a game where they could have won it on on a better day. So I I can't even like uh call it a bad performance from them in terms of the 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 result was bad, but the performance wasn't bad from them in my opinion. And probably they don't have a good team. Yeah, and they had Brown Olivian creating chances, but I think he has since gone to, gotten an injury, and there's no Pedro Sosa. So I don't hope to see better from them. I don't know to see better from them at all. <laughs> Well, if if them going out, I mean, <laughs> okay. You know, you know, you know, you know something about Espanol going down is that that there becomes an open opportunity for mid table established teams in the league. I think probably like that there, Alex Garcia. Those are players that are way better than the teams they are currently playing in. And you probably get bigger chances. True. Yeah, I'll sell it too. But it's, it, 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 it's... <laughs> Oscar, stop. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, they haven't won away from home since, like, October, I think, right? Do you guys think? Do you think there's a chance Sevilla win the Europa League while getting relegated? It's possible. It's possible. I I think a lot of people think. Yeah, it's hilarious. A lot of people think Sevilla might win the Europa League before, because of their issue with the Europa League. My doubt is because of Sampaoli. It's shady. 
He's a shady type of manager. No my no one I want around me at all. I think yeah, the argument isn't like a football argument. It's just a yeah, it's <laughs> intangibles. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> and you, you, know, you know the funny <laughs> although Arsenal's out now so I think that opens up the field because I feel like Arsenal was the best team in the competition You are right to North Moreno. Oh yeah, and there's Josie as well. And with with the other relegation teams like Valencia, Espanyol, Elche, Almeria, you can see there's no quality or there's less quality. But with Sevilla, there is quality in the team. There's obvious quality in that team. Just in the wrong hands. They should not be in a relegation battle, yeah. On popular opinion, get off get attack line. Their top two would probably be one of the best in the league in another era or in another season. True. <laughs> Now he's a filthy goal scorer. Yeah, the margins are close this year. They had the three points, yeah. I'm happy with his mistake. <laughs> I think he knew how big it was because, like, even the the substitute keeper had a great performance as well. Like, it was if they'd held on, that was going to be a confidence boosting win. You know, there's actually this fear I have with Cardiff. 
I expected them to be this team that will put down no fights whatsoever, you know, in a relegation battle. Then January comes and they start bowling, even beating Valencia and Mestaya. And I'm like, oh, if Valencia can get relegated now, Carizo will survive this. And then it becomes a real fear. <laughs> it's not be funny that. La Real is what three three gap on Betis and the three behind Atleti, right? Man. It's it's still surprising to me, man. I, Cause I thought La Real had third place locked up, man. <laughs> I really thought they locked it up. There's a there's a five points difference between sixteenth and twelfth. Just the five point difference. There's a possibility Juna can get relegated this season, despite all the plaudits. <laughs> True. Ex extending to Athletic. Yeah, I'm fifty fifty. I would have loved to draw someone else besides Chelsea. Sure. Maybe maybe keep the bracket exactly the same as it was, but maybe dr just swap Bayern and Chelsea. I would have taken that. I think you would take Bayern by Chelsea. Yeah, only because I'm just tired of playing prem teams now. I'm just, I'm sick of them <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I think the draw is the best that, anyone, that we can get at this point in time and 
and it's very exciting, you know. Madrid or Chelsea get to face Bayern or City, Milan, Napoli, Inter, Benfica, and the underdog story of Benfica, you know, they, they, might, they, can, they can get to the final. So it's, it's not really an underdog story because they're a big club in their own rights, but then you get what I mean. Long time and. I, I, I agree with you. They are. I agree with you. They, they are. are. Inter, is on, Inter is on a really poor form, if I'll put it that way. They lost to Spezia recently. I think this, I mean, yesterday night they lost to Juve. Lost to Spezia recently, lost to Juve, you know. Juve against Porto in the, in the Champions League, although it was in their favor. But I think Benfica riding high currently, scoring a lot of goals in almost every match they play. Scored three post goals in every match they play right now. And it's a bit difficult test for Inter, you know. But then I think the oh more established team factor. But then I don't rule out a surprise. Napoli. Napoli and Bayern. Yeah, my heart, my heart wants Milan Madrid. Uh, my brain says Napoli Bayern. It could happen. Yeah. Now sometimes sometimes you have to grind, bro. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> the path is not easy. <laughs> yeah. We're probably underrating Milan. But probably is not underrated. Probably their their recent form says it all, but then might be a surprise against Napoli for that matter. Probably work. Yeah. Yeah. Napoli's running away with the league. Everyone else is just fighting <laughs> to drop out of top <laughs> underneath them.
and they could get the 15 points back. If if it gets overturned, then what? <laughs> Rumor wins it for me. Yeah, the Moreno, the Moreno factor. The Moreno factor. I said, I said the Moreno factor. Well, you know, I remember... Yeah, the semi-final we faced it. Yeah. But I remember last last season, yeah, on a particular episode, yeah, where we mentioned um, Union St. Lua and their form and their uprising, you know, from from second division and battling for Europe 10. And I remember, you know, never crossed my mind that at that point in time that they'll probably be in, the, be in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. And it's like a very, very nice story, you know. Even defeating Union Berlin, what will be a bigger opposition for them. Very, very good story. Yeah, very good. But one thing that is striking me, that is striking me though, is that Man United can defeat three Spanish teams on their way to the semi-final. It's not looking good for the Spanish league. It's not looking good for La Liga. At all. Yeah. Mm. They're taking back revenge. Isn't <laughs> they had a very poor record against the Spanish <laughs> Now they're just revenging everyone. I, I think I just I just expected I expected Barca to defeat them, you know, to just eliminate them, you know. It was surprising for me and disappointing. Roma <laughs> 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 mm, Man United. I think Sporting Roma with Sporting to win it. Yeah. But th- th- that's purely on the bias of Ruben Amorio. <laughs> purely on the. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure.